Hi, Brian. You have done a great job, so don't worry about it. We'll figure it out together, okay? Because everything that you have so far is exactly right. And I'm going to even show you what I'm impressed with. I'm going to Alt or Option click on the mask, which will show you what the mask really looks like. Okay, so, so watch. You did that perfectly. I mean, that is phenomenally perfect. Now, I'm going to use this to recreate the channel. I got to do a couple things first. Okay, so I'm going to make a selection of this. So I'm going to, um, and I just alt clicked on it again or option clicked on it. Okay, so I'm going to hold the command or control key. That's what I want you to do. So step one is to hold command or control and click on this, this mask. Good. Now, let's go over here to select and save selection. Now we're going to have to do something in a minute because, well, you'll see. So I'm going to save it as mortar one, except it's going to look wrong and we can fix it. So I've now saved it right there. Now you see mortar one right there. Now I'm going to deselect. So I wanted you to hold this is, let's just go, go over this again. I wanted you to hold the command or control key, click on this mask and just simply go to select and save selection. Okay. Now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click on this mask. Now we have to do something here. So I'm going to hit Command or Control I. Don't add the Shift key. Do not add the Shift key because I want to invert this like that. I want to, it's not inverse, it's invert. Okay. Because we actually want to make a selection of the light area, not the dark area. So I had to invert it. Do you understand? Okay. Because now we have to do something else. And you correctly filled up this mask. Don't worry about the red color over here. That's only red because I'm selected on the mortar mask. Watch. If I click the RGB image, it goes back to normal. So I'm going to click on the mortar mask again. I want you to do that. Click on your new mortar one mask. Hit command or control L. Now I want you to move the white over so that turns back to white. Do you see how I did that? I brought the white over to this histogram right here. That's the white histogram. And I'm going to say OK now because it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Now save your file. OK. So what we're going to do to get the shadow is, um, and I'll make a layer that's going to be above the mortar here or above the brick, OK, for the shadow. I forget where I put it. It's either above the brick or above this one. So it's one of the two. But I'll click on this mask again. Actually, I don't need to. So the next thing I want you to do, and I'm going to turn off the brick for now and the graffiti, and I'm going to turn on your black layer so just so you can see the stuff. Now look, I'm going to hold command or control and make a selection of my mortar. Good. Now I am going to show the brick and I'm going to remove some opacity from it. It just helps you to understand what's going on. Okay, now watch what I'm going to do. God, you did a, such a good job. So I'm going to hit the M key. So please hit the M key. Okay, use your cursor key now and go down, down, down three and over to the right three. So you see how I did that. I went down and over. Okay, over to the right. Now I'm going to save that selection as mortar three. A mortar two. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. Mortar. Um, did I spell it right? <laughs> no, I didn't. I must be tired. Mortar uh, two. Okay. Now let's hit the return key. So now let's put everything back to normal. So I'm going to zoom out. Okay. We turn off the black layer. We click to the brick. We go back up to normal. We turn on the graffiti, we deselect. Okay, that's what I want you to do. Okay, so I want you to watch this whole thing first and then I want you to rewatch it as you're doing it. Now let's make a shadow layer. And I'm going to put the shadow layer above the graffiti for now. Okay, thank you. So let's call it shadow. And I'm not exactly sure 
why your channels went away over here. But if you never went to select and save selection, then, then they wouldn't stay. Now I want you to see something interesting. Okay, just, just watch this before I do the shadow. If I click on this mask, do you see how it suddenly shows up in my channels? Well, that's a temporary thing right there. Okay, it's totally temporary. That's what this slash means over here. So totally temporary. Watch when I click to the image. It's going to go away when I click away from the layer. If I click on the layer, there's the mask. See, there's the new channel. Now, I don't know if that's what you did, but you saw me go when I, we saved Mortar 1, I actually had to go to select and save it, right? And then when I moved it down and to the right, I saved it again. I saved the selection again as mortar two. So now I'll click back up here, which is what I want you to do. Now this is going to be simple. I'm going to get close so you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to make, I'm going to hold my cursor over mortar one, hold the command or control key and click. Now I have a selection. Now I'm going to subtract the one we moved from mortar one. So how do you subtract? You go command or control and you add alt or option. So you can see the minus symbol. Do you see the minus symbol inside mortar two right over here? I'm going to click it. Now I have the shadow. It's so cool. So now just so I don't lose it, I'm going to save it and I'm going to call it shadow. That's what I want you to do. So you understand that if you deselect or you lose it and I'm going to save the file now, we already have it. So it's right there, it's in channels. Now all I have to do is hold the command or control key, click on shadow, zoom out so you can see it. Let's um, uh, just fill it with a black, okay, for right now. So let's just fill it with black. So I'm gonna move up here. So you know to fill right there with the foreground color of black. Now look, I wasn't selected on the proper layer. What's the first rule? Select your layer first, Brian then fill. Don't fill and then hope you're on the right layer. So now I'm going to go um, option, delete, or alt backspace, and I have my black. Look, I have the black shadows for all the bricks. That's so cool. Now, let's make sure we're on the layer. Let's go to um, filter, blur and Gaussian blur it by two, one or two pixels. So I'm going to go to Gaussian blur and one pixel is fine. One pixel is beautiful. Now I'm going to move back out and you can see the shadow works perfectly. Now I could remove just a tiny bit of opacity to make it a little bit more bricky like, but now there it is. Now look at how the shadow works perfectly. And you remember how we got the shadow. We took mortar one and we made a selection of it, like I just did. Let me zoom in. Let me go up here so you can see it. Now, with the M key selected, I went down three and over to the right three, and I saved that as mortar two. Then I'm, because I'm going to deselect right now. Then I made a selection of mortar one. I went command option or control alt subtract mortar two, so click over where the icon is, and then select and save that selection as shadow if you need it later. And that should be it, that sh you should be done. You should be ready to just turn it in. I don't know why you lost your mortar channels. The only way you could lose it, as I said before, if you're selected on the layer, it temporarily shows up. But if you're not selected on that layer, which I don't think you were, um, it, 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 it doesn't show up. You would have had to go to save the, okay, my question is, did you go to select and save selection? When you had the mortar all done, and you must have done something because you got this mask totally right, totally right. So hope that helped and please let me know.